Hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. With your host, Kenneth Pokor. And my special guest, Mr. Mark Coglin from the Waterloo Region Electric Vehicle Association. This is episode four, recorded on September 7th, 2018. Well, yeah, welcome, and thanks for tuning in to episode four of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. My name is Kenneth Pacora. I hope everybody's doing okay out there, and appreciate you tuning in to listen to this episode. I'm really happy to have Mark here from the Waterloo Region Electric Vehicle Association, amongst other things. How you doing, Mark? <laughs> Very good, Ken. Thanks for having me in. I really appreciate it. You're quite welcome. Thanks for joining me. I I, you know, I always try to find experts in the EV field. And, uh, you know, somebody told me you were one. So I said, hey, <laughs> come on down to the uh, recording studio here in the lovely town of Caledon. <laughs> Appreciate you coming out. Um, so what I want to do, and, if, and as I said earlier, if you've listened to the show, is I kind of keep them loose and we just we talk about different subjects in the EV environment and uh, I try to bring in experts in the field. So what I wanted to do is give you an opportunity to tell folks what you do, what you're all about. You you, you got a couple of things going on the EV side yeah. and not that you're just a, long, a longer owner than I am. I'm just a recent owner but with my Leaf only uh, three, three and a half, almost four months now. But uh, you've been involved doing this for a while on a couple of aspects, so uh, let's let's start with that. Well, um, I was uh, fortunate to be able to uh, get my first EV back in August of 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, I had been watching forums and information about these cars for quite some time, and I decided that uh, I didn't want to buy new. Uh, I thought I'd get a used one after maybe the first leases started to come out. Uh, or were up and uh, was able to uh, actually find one in, uh, uh, it was Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay. So, Which, uh, if folks don't know, that's, uh, what, about a seven-hour drive? About seven, 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 eight, eight, hour eight hours, from, yeah. From Toronto, north? Exactly. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, I uh, took a flight up there, grabbed the car, and drove it back uh, through uh, Michigan and popped out in Sarnia and then to my home in Kitchener. Wow, so your first experience in an EV, and this was a Chevy Volt. Chevy Volt. With a V as in Victor. Correct. Correct. A 2012 model. And your first experience is driving, what's that, 1500 kilometers yep, or something? Yep, that was my first. Wow. So I, I was you. pretty I was pretty <laughs> confident that the car would do it based on my readings and, and people. Yeah. that. But it was the first attempt, uh, and which was really great was that uh, I was able to pick this up as a, a lease for nine months. And then I had the ability, of course, to turn it in or to purchase the car after. So it gave me the best of both worlds. I could I could learn, I could see if it was going to be for me, and then I can make my choice nine months later, which obviously I, I chose uh, to keep. So uh, when I got wow. back to Kitchener, mm-hmm. I started to look for other li- like-minded people uh, around the region and was able to come up with a, a few different names and uh, just sent them an email and said, hey, would you like to meet up and talk a little bit about the Volt? They had some Volts and uh, a group of two people uh, at this point has grown to a mailing list of over 200. Wow, that's incredible. Now, at that time in 2012, that was the first model year for the Volt, is that correct? That was the first model year in Canada. So you correct. were a pioneer, and you, or you guys back then, and you know, you said like-minded. They might have been actually thought of as crazy at that time <laughs> because you know, EV <laughs> wasn't wrapping up as it is now. That's uh, right. How was that, uh, Trying, trying to figure all that out. It, it was, well, that's why I wanted to put together a group of people because, yeah. uh, you know, it was great to read things on forums and, and see posts from different people across North America, but you, you really can't, you know, get a better connection if you can actually speak to a person and, and talk to them face to face. So exactly. we put this group together. Uh, it started as a, the Waterloo Region Voltec group. Mm-hmm. And then it started to grow and we got more and more volts. And then all of a sudden our first leaf showed up and said, hey, you know, I realize you have Volt in the name, but I'd love to join. And and we said, you know what, we should probably look at expanding this. Uh, there are more and more EVs starting to come on the market back in 2014 when this was happening. And we decided to put uh, together a few more uh, like-minded people with mm-hmm. different EVs. And we became the Waterloo Region EVA uh, or REVA for short. I like that. Now, for folks who are listening that don't know anything about the geography of Southern Ontario, Waterloo Region is a town area about 45 minutes uh, west of uh, the Toronto area. 
and population now, because it's got kind of like three municipalities around that area, Kitchener, Waterloo, and Cambridge, it's what, about 500,000? Yep, it's approaching half area? a million. Yep. Half a million, so definitely getting big. So, uh, and, and the reason for, for not only g- getting people together, like finding these people, as you mentioned, and forming the organization, not only to share ideas and talk, you know, live versus forum, but I, I guess you guys wanted to start doing some public outreach. Is that correct? Well, yeah, it started as self-education mm-hmm. for us mm-hmm. all. Uh, and then uh, it started to branch out a little bit where we had a request of, you know, could you come to the library and maybe show mm-hmm. your cars mm-hmm. uh, and uh, explain a little bit to the public? And so we kind of grabbed that. And and now we're probably doing somewhere between 12 and 16 events uh, a year nice. uh, throughout the year. Certainly it's more heavily in the summer and spring mm-hmm. and fall. Uh, and in the winter, we typically do uh, monthly meetings where we get together and uh, we try to bring in someone uh, to cover a topic or discuss a couple of topics and then uh, open it up to roundtable discussions uh, because there's always new and, and uh, familiar people that mm-hmm. come and it, it's good to mix it up. Yeah. And in fact, I've had the pleasure of coming out to a meeting. You invited Trevor and I back in the win- early winter or late winter, I guess, January, yeah. February or something like that, where we came out and attended and uh, it was excellent to... Uh, to listen to different topics um, and and answer some questions for people at the time that were still uh, wondering when the heck the Model 3 is coming. So (laughs) we talked a little bit about that. But yeah, I mean, that's, I think, the biggest thing. um, And, you know, even before myself getting uh, an actual EV to own, but getting into this environment is the the need to actually go out there and start educating or start talking to people about that. Because the, the industry has changed so much since when you, you know, being a pioneer, uh, getting your first EV at, at that early stage in 2012, it's changed so much now. It's much more mainstream. And I would say that you mentioned all the events that you guys do. Um, the public is, uh, people are just now starting to understand what's this thing about EVs. And then I thought right. it was kind of uh, obscure before. but Oh, it certainly you know. was. It, it mm-hmm. was in, in the early days, uh, the questions you get really reflected the uh, the novelty of, of EVs in the market. Uh, there were really simple questions. Um, <laughs> there were really some some bizarre questions. Sure. But uh, we have noticed that certainly over the past three years that those questions have kind of honed in and uh, become more specific. And a lot of the public now is aware mm-hmm. that, that, that that fraction of cars exists now in the marketplace. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great to see that that education is starting to take hold and many people now don't have to ask what an EV is or, or you know, how, how they actually operate, mm-hmm. but they are, they are now gravitating to, you know, more, uh, I guess, uh, specific questions uh, that uh, the general ones are now answered already. Right. Kind of how could something like an EV, you know, work in my lifestyle or, you know, how would I do this or how would I do that? Right. Right. So from a membership, how big is uh, WRE or Reva well, we're, we're, at this point? Reva is, uh, like I, as I mentioned, we have about 200 people on our mailing Excellent. list. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly uh, at our meetings uh, throughout last year, we were getting anywhere between, I would say, uh, 30 to 50 people come out for a meeting. Mm-hmm. And then our events uh, are uh, range from very small ones, where it's just like a, a handful of, of vehicles uh, to our big actual annual event is coming up. The mm-hmm. National Drive Electric Week in Kitchener yes. uh, at Kitchener City Hall is coming up uh, just next week, Saturday, the 15th of September from 11 to 3. If you want to come out and join it. us. Go ahead and plug it. You yeah. want to join us, uh, please please feel free <laughs> yeah. to go to the National Drive Electric site and, yes. and sign up. And uh, we'd love to have you out. It's a free event. But uh, that is going to be probably our biggest right now on the website. Uh, we we have over 70 vehicles already mm-hmm. registered. We have wow. over 150 wow. people that are registered to show, and we're gaining more every day. So we st- with still a week left to go, we're hoping to you know maybe broach the 200 registration mark. Nice. I know I went last year. It was a great. We had a great weather day for that. Yes. I remember it was nice and pleasant. Great turnout. Um, I did a little speak about uh, you know uh, the EV environment uh, as a, as a whole which was good and uh, answered a lot of questions. A lot of interesting people came out. And, and again, Kitchener's, you know, trying to lead the way and uh, from a municipality standpoint in, in furthering EV adoption. Uh, I know they've got a charging infrastructure that they're putting in. I think they capitalized on some of the grant money from last year, correct? They, they, a little they, bit? They, a little bit. Mm-hmm. And some more is supposed to be coming. Uh, we're just kind of waiting for it to, to be hooked up. But uh, uh, Kitchener, I think, as a uh, as Waterloo Region as a whole – probably sitting at about 
80 some ch- level two level oh, three chargers throughout the region that's pretty good mm-hmm. so uh it is it's certainly growing mm-hmm. year over year mm-hmm. um but uh, a lot of it is uh, private industry so you've got like malls and destinations that are putting these things in restaurants that mm-hmm. want people to come to their establishments and, yeah. and put those on on plug share and that's uh that's actually some of the audience that i talk to i try to talk to businesses about the destination type of charging you know that they can do um, on that note, I, I went to did a trip to uh, to Windsor just a few weeks ago. Uh, kind of my first long long trip, doing a first uh, series of rapid charges to get there, and the least just one each way. And I purposely found a hotel in Windsor that had a level two charger, one of the Sun Country ones. And right. and I've never stayed there before. I've always stayed at a different chain because I have a membership. But I purposely went to this hotel so I could plug it in overnight, uh, knowing that I'd be da- down low by the time I got there. Plug it in overnight for free and, and have my, my full charge waking up in the morning. And I told them when I checked in, I said, by the way, I only came here because you had this charger. Oh, great. Thanks for letting us know. So it's not only about you know getting businesses to look at this, but then if you do go to a business uh, or yeah. establishment and you have an EV and one of the reasons you're going there is because of their charging, let them know. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that certainly helps the cause. It mm-hmm. lets people know that the infrastructure that they put mm-hmm. in place is being used and is appreciated. So going to that restaurant and plugging in, Always ask for the manager. Just let them know that uh, you're very pleased that they have that there. And that's one of the reasons you are there. Absolutely. Excellent. So um, beyond the, the public events that you guys are doing um, or you know, what I'm trying to uh, to get people to think about who are listening is maybe there are people that might want to start something like what you've started already and what you have in the, for the last few years. Because I think establishing, whether it be clubs or or societies or whatever you want to name them to promote EV adoption, to talk to people. That's really where we're seeing now the lack of um, the gap really in this infrastructure, in this environment is education, right? People are a little wiser. They kind of have an idea about an EV, but they, they don't really know much beyond that. Right. I still get, you know, really like there's charging environments out there. I can take my EV through the car wash. I won't get, <laughs> won't get a shock, you know, well, maybe in the, in the t- car, how much a car wash is you might, but yeah, uh, yeah. all these kind of stuff. So it's really important uh, if, if people that are listening out there that are interested in, in setting something up, how do you go about doing that? What was the catalyst there? Well, I know that when I got involved with it, there were, were some groups that were maybe an hour, hour and a half away. Uh, mm-hmm. I felt that was a little bit long for for uh, my purposes. Um, so I just started to look for locals uh, that were on listing uh, comments mm-hmm. uh, on different forums mm-hmm. that I was following about EVs. And that's a good place to start. Uh, you Certainly, you can connect with anybody around the world, but you can also connect with people that are local if mm-hmm. you watch where these people are from or the comments they put in. And uh, I was able to reach out to a few of them, and we started to form the nucleus of the group uh, just nice. based with that. And then moving forward, I think a great thing to do if you're trying to attract attention in your local area Fire up a Facebook page, mm-hmm. uh, put some information on there, put a few posts, you know, through the week, mm-hmm. and you will get people that will gravitate to you uh, just based on that information. Yeah. Uh, you will get comments, you will get uh, people asking questions, and the conversation then can start uh, from from those points. Absolutely, great advice. Now. You're busy beyond just doing uh, Riva stuff. Um, obviously, you've had the Volt for a while, and this the one that you just came here with is your second Volt. Is that correct? That's you correct. Had a first That's gen. correct. Now you just got one. Uh, it was earlier this year or late last late year? Late last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, okay. mid mid last year. So it's a 2018 model year. 2017. Correct? 2017. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the so, second generation of that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I uh, I love the Volt mm-hmm. uh, tremendously. The the first gen. Uh, my daughter was going to college, mm-hmm. needed a car. And we thought, what better way to get her on her way, but her first car will be an EV. So she was able to, I gave her a bit of a family discount and she bought my car. (laughs) I still get to see it every day. It shows up in my driveway. But uh, at that point, I decided I was, if uh, I was going to move to the second gen Mm -hmm. and uh, was very pleased uh, with it as well. So I couldn't have been happier. Uh, to to have both volts at that Excellent. point. Now, and you've you've also expanded your EV lineup because you have a Model Three too, correct? I do, I wow. do. I was fortunate yeah. enough uh, to be able to uh, collect uh, the Ontario incentive yeah. and, uh, that was available. Uh, the stars kind of aligned, as I mentioned yeah. earlier. Yeah. And I was able to uh, purchase the long range uh, Model 3 mm-hmm. uh, nice. and pick it up in June of just this year. And, and- I got to tell you, 
It is just fantastic. It's a day. Now, it I don't is think fantastic. I've seen it because I, I haven't. Uh, we haven't come across at events for a while, so I don't think I've seen it since you've got the Model Three. But uh, what color did you get? Oh, I got red. Red, of course, because this. <laughs> I was just going to say you got red, right? Excellent. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I've driven it uh, as everybody knows when we did the video last year. Um, you know, great car, certainly, um, really one of the best things out there. I mean, Tesla oh, yeah. does does. does build batteries right they build the thermal management you know the range is i mean you're probably getting close to 500k if not a little more if not a little bit yeah, more yeah absolutely which is great yeah so it's very pleased with the car uh it it is a car that is on a different level yes um you can look at the volt you can look at leafs you can look at other evs but tesla is a different level they are they are now your interest in tesla goes even farther back than getting your model three because as when you find the time to do everything that you do you also do a podcast called the tesla life correct correct so tell us a little bit about that we started uh, the tesla life up about uh, a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and uh it uh it 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 kind of sprouted from another podcast i'm involved with called what drives us mm. and it became kind of the sister podcast to what drives us what drives us is all about alt transportation, mm -hmm. uh, different forms of it, yep. EVs, everything across Good. the board, right down to scooters. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about all of it. And we thought that there was so much interest in Tesla. And I had so much interest uh, having a, a Model 3 reservation for, you know, at that, at that point over a year waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought uh, it was a great uh, avenue to uh, share some information with the public uh, and be able to have some great conversations about a car that uh, was highly anticipated. And uh, a lot of people uh, were anxious to get their hands on. So we started that up and uh, it's, it's, it's really gone well for us. We're really enjoying it. We've got a Twitter uh, uh, feed at uh, The Tesla Life. Mm -hmm. uh, almost 7,000 people now follow it. Oh, excellent. Uh, so it's been, it's been great. Uh, had a, lots of interaction, lots of uh, people now sh mm -hmm. even sharing with us uh, uh, news leaks and uh, mm -hmm. you know pictures, spy shots that they catch of like today we got some shots about the Tesla Semi That's as right. it was rolling through uh, Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been it's been a whole lot of fun. And uh, you do that weekly, is that correct? That's correct. We yeah, run yeah. the podcast mm -hmm. uh, through our YouTube uh, mm -hmm. site. Mm -hmm. um, just search the Tesla Life, mm -hmm. and uh, we run a weekly show. Yeah, and I've been on it. So again, thank Absolutely. you. I know I was on that last fall, and I uh, appreciate you having me on that to answer questions, to talk to people about whatever, you know, whatever you guys want to talk about on Tesla. Uh, at that time, I was a bit more of an authority now because I cover so much more. I don't have the bandwidth, the brain power to kind of absorb it all. There's just there too is much. A, there is a whole lot of it There's now, isn't there? a whole heck of a lot of stuff yeah. going on uh, beyond uh, just Elon's tweets and everything. But uh, since I have you on the house, you might as well give us a little taste because uh, on the shows, I only briefly talk about Tesla because there's so much other stuff going on. But What's kind of the major action going on these days with Tesla? So just recently, since our last show, uh, we've noticed a, a lot of uh, banter uh, about uh, the Tesla Semi, mm -hmm. as mentioned yeah. earlier. Uh, it is on a Midwest, uh, I guess, show where it's dropping off at different uh, clients or reservation holders uh, mm -hmm. for the truck. And uh, actually, one of our um, one of our uh, correspondents uh, that is in uh, Missouri happened to come across the uh, Tesla Semi at a supercharger. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting was that uh, it was parked uh, parallel with four of the chargers. And this, the, the driver uh, who had gotten out he asked for no pictures mm -hmm. uh, from our, our Evan, our uh, person in the field. I think I did see one. <laughs> Maybe not from him, but I saw something. On the We're not going to say it was from him no, anyways. No. Exactly. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he went out with a number of large extension cords, plugged them into the four uh, different uh, Tesla superchargers, and then they combined into one large charger to plug into the truck. Mm. So that was kind of interesting to see that they're using four separate superchargers to charge the, the semi all at mm -hmm. once. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, uh, was the, uh, the short range truck, the 300 mile truck uh, that was out there. And the driver was happy to let uh, Evan know that he was traveling uh, to uh, JB Hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, he would be heading up to uh, UPS in Chicago. And then from there, we've had reports today of it's uh, traveling back towards California through Utah. Nice. Nice. And I've driven a lot of those highways. Uh, 
it's a beautiful beautiful drive yeah you know tesla certainly turned the trucking world on its side when they announced the and revealed the semi last year um certainly you know again that torque and just the easy easiness to drive it you know you don't don't have to have all the stuff and, and you can get going faster and all this kind of stuff and, and the cost savings there really is a tangible roi i mean when we talk about ev cars for consumers it's a little tough to do an roi analysis at this point in time you you, you know yes you're going to get some money back from fuel savings yes your insurance will be a bit lower depending on how you drive and how many tickets you get but anyway and yes your maintenance and, will and yes be your little, maintenance is yeah. lower but you know we know that the cost parity isn't there consumer wise for cars so there is that gap that that you have to pay for and, and it may you may not recover that money back in eight or ten years depending on how long you own the ev but yeah. in the trucking world it's it's a much quicker turnaround time. that's right because yeah. those trucks are on the road mm-hmm. in some cases 24 mm-hmm. 7 they come to a depot they switch drivers and the truck is back on the road so uh it becomes a, a great roi for those vehicles yep. because they are constantly moving and mm-hmm. constantly churning up the miles and i think that's where the interest comes from because tesla's talking about a two or three year roi on that, which is phenomenal for that kind of investment that exactly. you would make, because these things are going to be what 150 to 300,000, I would take it, which is kind of the average. Tr- exactly. Uh, you know, semi- you know starting at $200,000. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're different, different amounts, uh, but based on the battery size. Yep. But certainly, uh, what's interesting is that, um, that there are many uh, different groups that are hungry to get whatever portion of a cent off of per mile they can get and that of course makes them more competitive uh drives down some rates Mm -hmm. and allows them to collect a little bit more profit uh based Mm -hmm. on that they're not filling these things up with diesel uh and maybe getting the electricity at a better rate uh, per mile Mm -hmm. and then the other bonus is of course people that are in the area like salt lake city and the mountains where uh, this truck with its instant torque mm-hmm. uh, is going to be able to go f- up faster mountain passes right. than yeah. regular trucks. Yeah. So they are going to be in a passing lane going 65 miles an hour when the other trucks are doing 55 crawling <laughs> up the mountain. And so, again, time is money yeah. in the trucking industry. True. So so they all love that ability to uh, go a little bit faster and have the truck being able to do so. Good point. I mean, I know I've been on some two lanes and going up a hill with a truck flash and it's four ways because that's what they have to do. You know, they got a heavy load and they can only go so fast. And uh, you're absolutely right. This thing's going to pull away and be able to, to, to get the speed quicker and maintain that speed even in in higher uh, type rate environments. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. and another story to that is that uh, uh, Walmart, mm-hmm. uh, which had ordered a number of the semis already, um, Walmart USA and Walmart Canada both had ordered a set and, uh, Canada, Walmart Canada just ordered another 20. Wow. And it's been announced that they are going to be running those trucks, uh, out of the Mississauga distribution mm-hmm. center, which yeah. is very close to where you are. It Ken. is absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, they will, uh, they will be using it for the distribution network, uh, in Ontario. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll probably be wow. early to see them on the roads here in Ontario once the truck becomes available. I'll have to look out for them because I'm literally around the corner from that. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So that'll be interesting to see. Now the roadster of course is back in the news because it was uh, revealed or unveiled at a either a car event in Europe uh, just yeah, recently. It was, um, a, yeah, the Grand Bastille yeah, or something right. along that line. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of shows going on at this point uh, uh, for un- reveals and unveiling and this kind of stuff. Uh, sharp looking car. I mean, you oh, know, man. again, it's going to be 300,000 Canadian when it gets up here, <laughs> but about zero to 60 and 1.9 or something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, 1.9. And that's just the standard model oh, Elon uh, Elon tells yeah, us. So yeah. the, who knows what the performance oh, model is going to do? So like zero to 60 in half a second, it just, you know, it just shot out of a cannon yeah. basically. Yeah, quarter mile in 8.8 yeah. seconds. Wow. So, you know, fast. we're talking wow. dragster times. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's, that's pretty heavy duty. Yeah, so uh, quite a quite a piece yeah. of engineering marvel that this uh, this this machine is going to be. Yeah. And uh, other, others are trying to get into that supercar game, electrified as well. But it's good to see Tesla do that. Um, from a Model Three standpoint, we know that we're seeing a lot more around here. It's kind of every day now. Uh, it's not really making any news as far as deliveries go. I spotted um, three on the way to here. I was going to say, <laughs> well, there's there's four that are in my subdivision alone, <laughs> and I know two of them, two of the people there, and there's one just outside. So uh, they've kind of already said hi and have met up with them. But yeah, it's kind of an everyday occurrence now. 
I'm seeing them all the time, uh, but they're still selling well. Uh, I don't think they're doing anything out of the, uh, the the special center in Mississauga anymore. They don't need to do that that I'm aware of, right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, there were rumors that they were going to rent uh, the mm-hmm. International Center the in game. Mississauga yeah. again, mm-hmm. but uh, it seems that for this uh, next wave that is right. starting right now, mm-hmm. uh, that they're not doing that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not I'm not sure if that was a misreport or mm-hmm. if something has changed. Yeah. So good to see them out on the road. And, and I wanted to segue a little bit on, on EV sales as well, because something I don't talk about on every show on the, the EV Revolution show. But um, uh, for August, obviously, and for the last couple of months now, the Tesla Model 3 is topping sales uh, in the U.S. And, uh, and I'll lump Canada into that because in North America-wise, it's it's the number one from an EV perspective. Um, and Tesla's leading the way they've done. Uh, it's saying uh, the Model 3 alone in August did almost 18,000 I know. It's right? crazy. It's so, that that hockey stick yep, chart uh, yep. is starting to show up that Elon mm-hmm. had talked about the S curve. That's right. Well, they are now in the point of uh, you know it's a sky shot yeah. on the chart right yeah. now. And and they've been I haven't followed it uh, recently, but the last I heard they were around certainly over the five thousand units a month. They were over the production. five thousand, mm-hmm. and they were brushing up against six thousand. They, they, they okay. didn't quite make six thousand, but they mm-hmm. were getting very close. Oh, excellent. Um, so obviously Tesla led the way in August for top manufacturers of plug-in vehicles combined with the model three, they did over 23,000 or shipped 23,000 units in North America. This is a U.S. number, so it'll be a little higher for Canada. Or if you, if you combine the two, GM uh, 3000, and I guess that would be the Bolt and the Volt if Correct. you combine those Together. two. Yep. Um, and as I talked about on one of my other shows, if you can find a Bolt, uh, a Bolt with a B with a, as in Bravo, uh, good luck. I think it's readily available in some of the compliance states, but a little harder to find up here in some other places. Extremely hard mm-hmm. to find here in Ontario. Yeah. Um, the, the the vehicle is is spoken for at all yeah. dealerships. You have to get your name on a list, and you're basically waiting for one or two to roll mm-hmm. in uh, to to get your unit. Now, yep. they've certainly have been sold, and people are still picking them up, but there's more demand than there is uh, actual cars. There is. Um, number three was Toyota. So I guess obviously led the way with the Prius models. Um, they're still doing quite well. In fact, I have a friend, a relative that just got one two weeks ago. So they love it. Decent car. Again, my motto is anything with a plug is a good thing. It's a good yep. first step. It doesn't have to be battery yeah, only. It's, and it's, it's, battery. it's the start, right? It they, is. They catch the bug at that point. We got to do it. Yep. Now, BMW Group still claiming they sold about 1,900 units in the U.S., so add a few more for Canada. So that's pretty good because I don't, don't hear a lot about I3 availability here other than that it's probably a, a month or less that you can get an i3. I think they're pretty good. Yep. Uh, I have a, a friend uh, in the uh, association that mm-hmm. has an i3, but he got a used one okay. uh, because the rates were so much better uh, mm-hmm. after three years. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes, it's a interesting car. Uh, another car with a frunk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then Honda's lumped into that. I guess that's the clarity that's starting to pick off that's primarily right. in California, in the carb states, most likely, because that seems to be where demand. But I am seeing, I have seen a few seen in the road here. Yes. And of course, Plug and Drive has one. And uh, I was up at the, uh, the Georgian show in Barrie in the summer, and they brought one up there, a uh, nice red clarity. You'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> nice car. I mean, if you're, you know, if you want a Camry or electrified, that's what it is, basically, yep. from that perspective, it drives. And then the Nissan with the Leaf, uh, just over 14, around 1,400 units uh, from that perspective. What, what was interesting in these numbers to wrap up this part was that really the shift now has been you know, predominantly in the past uh, year prior, I guess, to the last year, it was predominantly plug-in hybrid vehicles that were leading the way with battery vehicles catching up. Right. Now, the switch has been like, it's more than double the August sales have been pure battery only electric vehicles at, uh, you know, over 26,000 versus 10,000 plug-in hybrids. And I think that status following is the same wherever you go. In fact, in some countries like Norway or others, the Scandinavian, maybe in the UK, the BEVs might even be much higher uh, from a ratio than they are the plug-in hybrids. But it's interesting to see that flip-flop. Right, right. And right. that that's because technology is getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as it gets better, we get uh, more dense batteries. We get longer yeah. ranges. Uh, we get uh, different chemistries that are helping out. Mm-hmm. And uh as as people start to figure out that you know what uh, you know two hundred kilometers or two hundred fifty kilometers that's enough yeah I don't need to go any further than that in any typical situation that's right. and if my car is equipped with a fast charger then 
I've got 500 kilometers at my disposal. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's certainly something that people start to clue into that, you know what, I really don't need a backup generator at this point. That's right. And with more infrastructure, you know, as we, we talked about earlier with, uh, with you know, the, the number in KW alone that you mentioned, and I'm always reporting almost on every show about, about more infrastructure, more charging stations, more partnerships, more alliances, you know, even gas stations, Shell starting to deploy them in, in gas station scenarios. If they can't get you for petrol, they'll get you for electricity and, you know, right. and then come in and buy a bag of chips or the really high profit stuff. Yeah, right? that's right. The chocolate yeah. bar. Um, so that whole growth is helping to spur the, the battery only segment versus the plugins. Absolutely. Hybrids. So it's excellent to see. Now, um, also, I wanted to talk quickly about the, uh, for our U.S. listeners, I have a lot of U.S. listeners out there, the electric vehicle rebate, the tax rebate update for the federal side of things for them. Specifically for Tesla, uh, I think now that the dust has settled after June, July, I think it's, you know, Tesla's come out and said, okay, this is this is how we're seeing the the U.S. tax rebate sort out. So the, the, the tax credit, you're still available for the tax credit of 7500 the full, if your vehicle is delivered on or before December 31st of this year. So by the end of this year, you'll still qualify for the full 7500 or up to that, I should say. Correct. Depends on Depending your on your tax situation. Yeah, right? your income and other, and other caveats. And then, of course, this doesn't include state incentives. And because we know that there's lots of those out there. Uh, and then after from January 1st to June 30th of next year, it'll be halved. So up to 3750, you'll be able to get from a rebate. And then from July 1st to December 31st of next year, the second half of next year, it'll be halved again to 1875. So basically, people that are looking to buy a Tesla, and this is any model, X, S, or 3 on the US side, are still eligible to receive uh, some sort of federal tax credit to the end of next year. Correct. So or the, at the end of next, next year? Next year, yes, okay. so by 2019. Right, so. for the for the total phase-out of the correct, system. Yeah. Correct, because I think there's always been some confusion about that whole phase-out and people, you know, getting a little upset or I, can't, I won't get the 7,500. So, well, yeah, it's still around for another six months and then it slowly starts phasing out. So if you're eligible to get that, and uh, of course Tesla hit the 200,000 mark, I think at, by the end of June. That's right. Uh, from a U.S. Uh, delivery sold perspective. Um, which is great to see. And uh, as far as other manufacturers, I mean, uh, these are manufacturers that are still in line for tax credits uh, that you can still get for quite some time. BMWs in the U.S. side, only around 74,000 units that they've delivered. So there's lots of room and headroom there. Toyota is at about 86, 87,000 for their, pre, for their uh, hybrid models uh, that you can capture rebates on. Uh, Ford, um, yeah, Ford's still still shipping some EVs, <laughs> at least for now. Uh, I'll be talking about Ford a little bit on my next show, but uh, they're at about 110,000 units. So I can't, I don't see them approaching 200,000 anytime soon in the U.S. Nissan's though making a good run. They're yes. now the number two uh, uh, behind uh, GM, of course. Nissan's at just over 100, almost 123,000 units shipped in by the end of August. Uh, for the U.S., so they've got some about eighty, some odd, or just under eighty thousand headroom yet to go. And GM is at one hundred ninety. So combination yeah, they're, of the they're, Volt and the Bolt. It looks like that will be the next one that yeah. will trigger the sunset uh, for GM. And I would say within the next month or so, it's that close. Exactly, exactly. They have a uh, uh, with that one-two punch, yeah. they're able to you know they're pushing mm -hmm. out more and more cars. So yeah. people sometimes think about you know Volt or Bolt numbers, but together it's quite a sizable amount that's going out. Definitely is. So congratulations uh, on Tesla again for hitting, <clears throat> excuse me, that milestone of 200,000 and uh, GM will be next on the list. So if you're out there, you're listening and you and the U.S. tax rebate is and credit is uh, very important to you. Think about GM because if you and if you're looking at GM, think about it real hard because they're approaching that uh, yeah, that you, cap, and uh, of course if, the then the phase that will start. If you're on the fence, it's time yeah. to get off the fence. <laughs> exactly. So think think hard, and and yeah. it's time to act. And we know all about that here in Ontario. So we we, won't, <laughs> we were talking about that just before we started taping here, recording about the whole fiasco up here, and it's uh, oh man, but. Uh, I think it's just a short-term pain for some long-term game. It'll come back. It'll us. come back to something. Yes. will happen. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, also wanted to pick your brain out. This is something I didn't get a chance to talk about on an earlier podcast that I wanted to. But you know, one of the things I, I know that when you're out there talking to people and I'm out there talking to people, one of the, the issues, uh, the concerns that people that don't understand the EV environment is charging. Um, you know, I, they just don't kind of, there's a fear of that. Yes. They don't understand it. So they're fearful of it. And that is a, if to a lot of people is hesitating them towards EV adoption, right? You know, going past the part that, yeah, the, the cars, this model is big enough for my lifestyle. The range is certainly fine, but I want to take long trips here and there. 
And how do I charge a thing? I don't want to be stuck in the middle of nowhere and have to call CAA or, or whatever. So what are you what are you hearing? Is, are you hearing that when you talk to people? I, I find that the, the, mm-hmm. the, the most popular question currently about charging is, is someone saying they're under the, the miscommunication that they have to charge this outside of the home. Right. They think, yeah. you know, uh, how many charges are around in this city and what are, what are available? How much do they cost? Are they free? How do you find the availability? And it's like, just calm down mm-hmm. because you've got to realize that 98% of your charging is going to be done in your driveway. Mm-hmm. And that is something that people really don't consider that are not EV drivers currently. Uh, they hear about infrastructure. They hear about range anxiety. Mm-hmm. They hear this from media. And then really, if you can plug your car in your driveway, you're going to get 98% of your driving done in that way. So yeah. no fear of, of not going, be, being get somewhere and the charger's full or broken. Mm-hmm. That doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Just charge in your in your driveway. Then the next step for these people to understand is that there are a number of uh, utilities out there to help them, such as uh, like PlugShare, uh, a great application they can pick up. And if they happen to be going for a long trip, they can use that to kind of plan the trip and understand that maybe there is a waypoint in the middle that I could look for. Maybe there is an an A plan and a B Mm -hmm. plan, Mm -hmm. and they kind of build a a scenario out uh, as to what the trip is going to be. But it it certainly uh, is is not as uh, a dire situation as most people think uh, when most of the charging is done at home. Absolutely correct. You've taken the words out of my mouth. I mean, uh, talk to people and I say, where do you charge your iPhone? Like, what do you do? You plug it in every night. Well, it's the same kind of concept. And in fact, I mean, my experience with the Leaf is I find I don't have to charge every night because I'm I'm not, you know, I'm doing maybe 50, 60 K. I've got 270 when I wake up on a charge to 300s right now with these temps anyway. So I'm going three, four days and then I'll plug it in. Like I kind of look at what do I have to do tomorrow? I just go into the office or I'm not going to go very far. Then I don't have to plug it in. Right, right. Um, I can, but I don't necessarily need to. So Funny story with having a Volt for three years, Mm -hmm. I would religiously plug that car in uh, overnight so I could get my 190 kilometers (laughs) of range. Uh, And when I first got the Model 3, I was still doing that, <laughs> yeah. even though I now got a car that yes. can travel 500 kilometers. Uh, but, and I was kind of, you know, <laughs> double thinking myself one day, what am I doing plugging this in? I really don't need anything near this. I could probably yeah. let it go for three, four days. I'm the same way. I was the first week I had it, I was plugging in every night. And then I thought, I was thinking, gee, why do I have to do that? I don't really have to do that. I mean, <laughs> I'm only at 80%. I don't have to plug it in for the next day. I don't need 100%. Exactly. So, yeah. So those things are, are, are so true. And hopefully that, you know, people that are listening, if they don't have an EV or they're thinking about it and they're concerned about charging, you know, don't because there is a lot more infrastructure. There are, I think what you see on forums and what you hear from people that are the loudest are the very small minority of people that are really heavy duty drivers and that rely on, you know, extensive uh, after out of home charging environments to keep them going. But that's a very small facet of the overall EV population in my, based on the knowledge that I have uh, and the experience that I've seen so far in meeting people. Yes, they're going to be diehards that are going to complain that this doesn't have enough range versus others or, you know, some some charging sucks versus others, whatever. Right. Um, but, you know, for the vast majority of people, again, that 250 to 500 kilometers, you know, of a full charge is going to be plenty to get you where you need to go in a day. And if you need to go somewhere far, just like I did for my trip down to Windsor, Detroit, I planned, I looked at plug share. I said, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to have lunch. Came out from lunch. It's done. Went to my destination in the reverse kind of thing. I stopped at a different place just to try it. Again, had a coffee and, and dinner and then come out and it's done. So it, it doesn't impact the trip because I'm going to make those stops anyway. Exactly. And I think we as humans, we maybe overestimate what we think we are doing with these cars too. Because I know when I first started to look at uh, an EV, I was thinking, you know, I, I do pretty far trips uh, a few times a year, maybe maybe three, maybe four times. Mm-hmm. It turned out I did one. So, you know, I was really overcompensating for what was really not going to happen. But yeah. as as humans are, we, we kind of think about the situation and it's kind of uh, made up maybe a little bit different in our mind based on uh, uh, compared to reality. We do. And in fact, it's not so much range anxiety anymore. As you mentioned, it's bladder anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guzzling water and all this stuff and I got to find somewhere to stop. So that's becoming the norm. And one last thing I want to mention about charging that people, a lot of people don't uh, um, think about is the health. So when we go 
go and fuel up our gas cars, who knows what we're exposed to in particulates and fumes and all this kind of stuff and dust for 20, 30, 40 years, what kind of impacts? Uh, how long does it take to charge a car? What, three seconds to plug it in? Three seconds to plug it in and, and walk that's away. It, walk yep. away. So it's it's a really nice experience and uh, I hope people can kind of look at it from that perspective. And uh, and again, don't be fearful of charging. Charging is your friend. That's right. That's right. Okay, well, there's our music. That means we've reached the end of the show already. Wow, that was a fast 40 minutes or so. <laughs> that really flew by. That flew by. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to come down and sit with me and talk about the world of EVs. And here's your chance. Plug again everything that you're involved in. Oh, my gosh. Go for it. Um, if you would like to visit us, uh, you can see us on the web at uh, Reva, W-R-E-V-A dot C-A. You can also visit us uh, at our Twitter feed, which would be Reva group mm -hmm. uh, on Twitter and uh, certainly we have a Facebook page as well just search Waterloo Region EVA and you can find that on uh, Facebook as well well thank you very much excellent thanks again for coming down to uh, the shack here in Caledon <laughs> <laughs> with your red volt I appreciate you taking the time and uh, talking EVs and we'll definitely have you back on again Mark thank you very Great. much thank you very much Ken right. appreciate it care. This episode of the EV Revolution Show is sponsored by File Sanctuary. Paying hundreds of dollars a month for the servers running your business? With their high-performance, low-cost cloud servers, you can break out the big guns without breaking the bank. Get started today at filesanctuary.net backslash cloud and save 10% with promo code EVREVSHOW. Show.